Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today we want to talk about, I want to talk about a plant. You see, you find a lot of medicine and medicinal properties and compounds in spices and plants and leaves and roots all across the world. Different countries have their own set of plants and different spices that people have used the medicinal properties for decades and decades. And then came pharmaceuticals which are needed. Medicine is needed. Conventional medicine is needed. But what happened, what went wrong is it took over, it took over most of the natural remedies, it took over most of the natural ways of living. When medicine was scarce and people used nature to heal them, all of that got pushed on a back burner in the name of not enough of research or not much science to prove that it's right. I mean, how would you have much research when no one's really studying it? How would you have so much of research and backing when science isn't even making an attempt to look into it? because most of the science research projects are funded by the food lobbies and the pharmaceuticals. So that doesn't mean we don't give importance to nature and how nature can heal us. We see how we can make use of conventional medicine when required, but we try to bank mainly on nature for all the other kind of issues and ailments that we may have. This plant called the Tulsi plant or the holy basil plant was usually found growing in everyone's home before all the skyscrapers and apartments and people started moving into flats and all of that stuff happened. People lived in houses before or huts and smaller houses and they had this little pot outside the entrance of their house which was called the Tulsi plant or the holy, holy basil plant. Holy basil for a reason because it's, an, it's in Ayurveda, it's in the Vedas, the, the massive and powerful health benefits of Tulsi leaves. Some people chew these leaves some people make soups out of them. Some people brew the leaves and make teas out of them. They have medicinal properties and we're going to have a look at how you can use these inexpensive small leaves to improve your health and also help you reduce any of the ailments or suffering that you may go through from any of the diseases that we're going to talk about today. The best part about this is you don't have to rely on your vendor to provide these Tulsi leaves to you. If you have a little space, all you need is a little pot and you can grow your own Tulsi plant. And every day you can take out fresh leaves and chew on them or make a soup out of them. So the Tulsi plants are being, the, the, the Tulsi leaves today are being used all over the world, especially the US and London because they are referred to as adaptogens. Adaptogens are anti-stress compounds. When you chew on tulsi leaves or you brew it into a tea, it has these calming properties. They work as adaptogens at a cellular level, which means it has the ability to reduce anxiety at a cellular level. <clears throat> I would like to say it reduces stress, but then you'll think that if I have all the stress in the world and I sip on tulsi tea, my stress will disappear. Stress is up to you, the way you see it, how much you take and how you react to it, your attitude towards it. But how it impacts your cells at a cellular level, yes, adaptogens can help you with that. Things like ashwagandha, things like tulsi leaves can help you relax your anxiety at a cellular level because it works with the adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are responsible for producing cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone. We need it. We need small amounts of it. We need large amounts of it. Cortisol goes up. It should come down quickly. The problem is when your adrenal glands go on producing cortisol because you're stressed throughout the day. You move from one stressful event to another. Then you have emotional stress. Then you have anxiety. All of this makes your adrenal glands, which are these two small glands above your kidney that produce all of your hormones, including cortisol. So when you keep making your adrenal glands pump out cortisol, there's something called adrenal fatigue, which is very, very, very common amongst people across the world today, which means your adrenal glands can no longer produce the right amount of cortisol because it's been producing too much of it. And what goes down is the production of other hormones like DHEA and a whole load of other hormones. So then you're left with a hormonal imbalance. When you have a hormonal imbalance, right from PCOD to mood swings to ovarian issues to endometrial lining problems to mood swing, oh, I said mood swings again, uh, to weight gain, inability to lose weight, thinking problems, memory problems, everything is hormones in the human body. Your cells either have the right communication or the wrong communication. Your hormones help this communication to happen the right way. So hormones are so important in the human body, you've got to look at the adrenal gland. If it's too busy pumping out cortisol, you have a deficiency of other hormones and then we have a hormonal imbalance. No amount of birth control pills, no amount of hormone replace therapy or replacing your hormones with synthetic hormones is going to help. That's going to help you at a symptomatic level. That's going to treat you. But what's going to heal you is when you look at your adrenal glands and you say, hey, listen, 
I don't need you to produce so much of cortisol. So let me make some lifestyle changes so I don't have to churn out so much of cortisol, which means my hormones can automatically come into balance. So yes, when it comes to anxiety, Tulsi is fantastic. Holy basil is fantastic. This is different from sweet basil. We spoke about sweet basil seeds, which are your sabja seeds. That's a different plant. There are various plants of, in the basil family. This is holy basil or Tulsi. So when it comes to anxiety, sipping on a glass of Tulsi leaf tea. Now you can get the leaves, you can brew your own tea or you get Tulsi powder or you even get companies making Tulsi teas in bags. Now that's what you should be carrying with you to office. Get a cup of hot water, brew some tea, it'll have a calming effect on you, it helps you with your anxiety, it helps you with your thyroid as well. It's excellent for hypothyroidism because again, the problem with thyroid is not just the thyroid gland. When the thyroid gland has to constantly work, then it starts producing lesser and lesser thyroxine and that's why you have a problem. Most hypothyroid cases have a connection with stress again. You see, when you keep pushing your body and mind, every body and mind has a set point. Your body tries to slow you down for your own survival. How does it slow you down? In some cases, it produces pain, but then we take painkillers, the pain goes, and we decide to keep on you know, pushing, pushing our bodies beyond that set point. Or it controls your metabolic gland, which is your thyroid gland. If you slow down your thyroid, you start feeling fatigued. You automatically slow down. That's the body's way of slowing you down. Most people don't know that they have an underactive thyroid because their thyroid has automatically slowed down to slow you down. And we overlook all of these things because we want to continue leading our chaotic life. Lead it, but be aware of these things. Your medicine is only treating you, it is not healing you. So yes, when you consume Tulsi, Tulsi powder, Tulsi tea, it will have that calming effect, which means if your stress levels are better handled, you have a chance of overcoming your hypothyroid condition as well. When it comes to diabetes, again, there's enough of research showing the impact of Tulsi on your diabetic levels, which is why you go to an Ayurvedic doctor or you go to a naturopath. If you're diabetic, they will put you on Tulsi leaves to chew it or a tea because it helps you reduce your sugar levels. But why won't science talk about these things? Because again, it's an inexpensive leaf. You can grow it. There's no money involved. There's no money to be made in these things. But it doesn't mean that we don't do it in the name of not of there not being enough of research. If it works, it works. I know hundreds of people who are using Tulsi to keep their diabetic levels down and in place. When it comes to skin and acne, this is also fantastic again. Like you have the pharmaceuticals, you have the cosmetic industry, which is also a trillion dollar industry because they want to sell you creams and oils and dermatology and all of those things. Have it if you need it. But sometimes when you have the simplest acne, what you need is the essential oil of the Tulsi plant. It contains a compound called eugenol. When you mix this with a carrier like coconut oil and you use it on your acne, you're going to find that your acne gets better. But remember, acne is not just an outside approach, it's an inside-outside approach. You want to look at your water intake, your food, your fiber, your antioxidants and all of that. Cancer. When you go into villages in India and even in the metropolitan cities, you find a lot of people who have been advised to chew on 10, 20, 30 Tulsi leaves a day when they have cancer or to have Tulsi chai with a little bit of ginger because it's rich in phytochemicals. The best study comes from Ayurveda where they show you that Tulsi leaves has the ability to stop your blood vessels from growing abnormally. Now, how does cancer spread? Your blood vessels start growing abnormally. If your blood vessels grow abnormally, it is to feed the new cancer cells. You see, the whole world is trying to poison cancer through chemo, burn it off with radiation, or cut off an organ that has cancer, but we're not looking at how we can starve a cancer cell from growing. So it's about not giving the cancer cell the energy it needs, and then, yes, you have the ability to put yourself in remission because you allow your immunity, which is your body's intelligence, to take over. And there are so many plants and spices that do that. They don't allow the abnormal, abnormal growth of your blood vessels. So you're cutting off the supply to your cancer cells. You're, you're cutting off energy, and that's how you can possibly prevent the spread of cancer, metastatic cancers. Especially in ER negative cancers, breast cancers, where the doctors give you a very dismal picture that you know it's going to come back and it's going to come back. It contains, a, it contains a compound called luteolin. Luteolin is a fantastic compound which is also found in broccoli, cabbage and cruciferous vegetables and found in high amounts in Tulsi leaves, which is very, very effective in ER negative cancers as well. Radiation, when you're going through radiation or you finish radiation, Tulsi leaves has an anti-radiation effect on your body. You know the side effects of radiation on your body. It's affecting your cells around, your immunity, your digestion and everything. 
but since this is rich in antioxidants it has a restorative uh, effect on the human body when you're going through radiation or post your radiation you got to understand speak to your doctor because antioxidants during chemo and radiation can reduce the efficacy of the treatment so you may want to speak to your doctor or do it immediately after your chemo or your radiation we spoke about hormones, how everything in a man's body and a woman's body is related to hormones. Your mood, your temper, your skin, your hair, your weight, everything is to do with hormones. So you either have the right hormonal balance or you have an imbalance. So again, Tool CT can help you achieve that balance of hormones. Remember, when your stress levels are low, your adrenal glands produce the right amount of hormones and your body utilizes them the right way. When it comes to fever again, Tulsi tea in the olden days in villages, people were given Tulsi leaves to eat or a tea was brewed out of ginger, a little bit of turmeric and Tulsi leaves. And the child or the adult was made to sip on it to help you break the fever and fight the fever. <clears throat> when it comes to lung and respiratory disorders, be it asthma, be it bronchitis, be it pneumonia, be it lung cancers, Tulsi is fantastic because it helps you break down mucus, it helps you break down congestion and it basically increases the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide respiratory exchange in the human body. Your life and every cell in your body is dependent on how much of oxygen it can take and how quickly it can pass out carbon dioxide. That respiratory exchange is important and vital for every second of your life while you're awake and while you're sleeping. So if I ask you right now, observe the way you're breathing, almost everyone would, breathe, would be breathing the wrong way. Insufficient, shallow breathing. You're depriving your cells, trillions of cells with the prana, the life force oxygen. Work on your breathing, work on Tulsi leaves again. And of course, Tulsi leaves are rich in vitamin K, which is good for bone health and which is good for brain health. When it comes to migraines, this is my favorite. Just boiling tea leaves together, a little bit of tea, black tea, green tea, and a lot of Tulsi leaves will help you with a migraine and help you with a headache as well. Again, your answer is in nature. There are medicines in nature. Now, it's not like just Tulsi leaves are going to take away all your problems. But if you have an issue, like we discussed, try to fit it into your life. You can't do anything wrong by eating these leaves, which generations and generations have been consuming all over the world. And today, if you look at America, they're probably using more Tulsi than India. It's unfortunate that everything from our country has to, be, has to go to the West. I'm glad it's going to the West because someone's using it and someone's making a difference in their health. But it's got to be glorified with that Western label and then it comes back to us. Be it yoga, be it Tulsi leaves, be it ghee, be it coconut oil. It's a shame. We got to start looking at what we have in our own country and start using common sense logic, drop our egos and pride and make decisions that come from our very own roots. And that's how we got to live. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep. Have a great weekend.